Hello and welcome everyone to this Unite Now talk. Um, my name is Antonia Forster. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a technical specialist for XR here at Unity. Uh, XR means extended realities, and it's an umbrella term that covers AR, augmented reality, and VR, or virtual reality. So I really specialize in these industries and how they can benefit different businesses, like some of the ones that you are working in. Um, I'm just going to share my presentation, so hopefully you'll all be able to see everything just fine. Did everyone see that okay? And everyone can still hear me and see me? Lovely. Great. Okay. Uh, we've also got some video, so I'm just going to make sure I optimize for video as well. Uh, I've never done that before, so optimize for video. In fact, I'll optimize for video later when we have the video running, because I know that that can affect the quality of my static slides. So I'll do that uh, in just a moment when I share a video with you. So welcome. Um, I hope today that I'll be able to show you some use cases for AR, augmented reality in industry. And what I really want to impart upon you during this talk is to give you some ideas of content that you may want to create and also to really enable you to create content yourself, even if you have no coding experience. So I'll be showing you how to make an AR demo using Unity Mars, our new creation tool that makes it really straightforward to start creating AR content. So here's how the talk is going to be structured today. First, I want to give you some context of how extended realities, so VR and AR both, are being used in industry, whether that's architecture, automotive, or construction, and at what stages of the product lifecycle that can really bring the biggest benefits. Then I'd like to briefly introduce you to Unity Mars, our mixed and augmented reality studio. Then, we'd like, uh, then we're going to create a simple AR application together. So I'll walk you through the entire process from how to obtain Mars to how to create an application and then how to deploy that on your phone, in my case, an Android device. And then after that, I'd like to show you some case studies of how augmented reality, very similar to the demo that you're going to create, can actually be used to bring big benefits in industry. So that's uh, the structure of our talk today. And this is the app that we're going to make. Let me just optimize my screen sharing. So hopefully you can all see this clip playing now. This is the app that you're going to be able to make yourself by the end of the talk. It's very simple. It spawns these arrows onto image markers, but you can use this technique to spawn any image you like onto any real image marker in real life. So you could bring in your own 3D model, perhaps a character if you work in animation, uh, or perhaps a scan of an engine, CAD data, or even a whole building. And of course, those image markers can be on a wall or they can be flat on a table as well. So I'm going to make a few assumptions for the purpose of this talk. Let me just switch off my video clip sharing. For the purpose of this talk, I'm going to assume that you are familiar with the Unity Editor. That's our core engine and platform that everything else is built on top of. However, you won't need any coding experience. We're not going to create any code, nor am I going to give you code to use. This is going to be a code-free experience. I'm also going to assume that you don't have experience creating augmented reality applications and that you don't have any pre-existing knowledge of Unity Mars. Now, I did see in the chat that some of you do already work on virtual reality or in augmented reality. So you may have experience with this tech stack, this workflow, or you may have experience with a different tech stack or workflow. We are going to go quite slowly when we create the demo. So if you are an already an experienced app developer, then you'll find it very simple to follow along. Um, but for the purpose of that demo, really, I'm going to assume that we're quite um, beginners in terms of AR app development. So how can we use XR in industry? Well. When you're creating a product, you can use XR to visualize, prototype, and iterate really at every stage of the product lifecycle. 
The difficulty in my job, given that I work with XR across many different industries, is that every industry has a very unique and specialized workflow. It has very unique pain points. So we really customize our solutions. But what I have found in common across all those industries is that XR can be used throughout the product lifecycle for a number of different use cases. So for example, during the design and uh, creation phase, we can use XR to iterate quickly and immerse ourselves in the environment that we're creating. So if you work in automotive, you could sit inside the car that you're designing and developing. If you work in architecture, you could use virtual reality to walk around the building, or you could use augmented reality to see the building in its real life location. That allows you to very quickly see changes that you'd like to make and to iterate. It reduces your reliance on prototypes and on their associated cost. Before and during manufacture, XR has different benefits. It can be used to train staff on things that are perhaps too costly or too dangerous or just impossible to train someone on in real life. For example, if you work on a factory floor or you have employees that do, you could train them on how to operate machinery in an assembly line before that assembly line has actually completed construction. If you work in the construction industry, you could use XR to see the progress of a building in real time, to see different phases of its development. And then towards the end of the product life cycle, XR can be used for monetization. So you can place your product in the hands of a client or a consumer. You could show them the product in a, a virtual showroom in VR, or the consumer could view a product in their own real environment using augmented reality. They could visualize and configure it and make changes in real time. And that leads to a higher conversion rate and a higher probability of purchase. Now, one of the difficulties with mixed reality and extended realities is that they can put up a barrier to entry. They can seem daunting or technologically um, not the simplest thing to get started with because adopting new cutting edge technology isn't always very simple. So perhaps you don't have developers in your organization or perhaps you do, but they don't have experience with augmented reality. Perhaps you are the champion for augmented reality in your business and you have ideas of apps you'd like to create, but you just don't have experience, perhaps with AR or perhaps with coding at all. Well, that's where Unity Mars can really help. Mars is our mixed and augmented reality studio. It's an authoring environment with specialized tools and a workflow for creating intelligent AR experiences. But what does that really mean? Well, it's a set of tools and windows that is built on top of the Unity editor. It gives you the power to prototype, to test, and quickly iterate and deliver your AR content very quickly and easily. Personally, I've found it incredibly useful. I've had great success, and it's really cut down the time it takes to develop AR applications. Now, Mars is built on top of AR Foundation, which is Unity's base AR platform. An AR foundation is itself an abstracted layer, which exists on top of AR Kit, which is uh, Apple's or the iOS AR platform, and AR Core, which is Google's AR platform. What that means for you is that you don't have to develop multiple programs for multiple devices. You just develop one single program, change some configuration details, and then you can deploy it to any device, up to 20 different devices, in fact. And those may be mobile de devices, maybe tablets, or may also be head-mounted devices as well. Although there are some different uh, design considerations for head-mounted devices too. So it really cuts down on the time it takes you to build and iterate. It allows you to concentrate on the content that you want to develop rather than getting bogged down or slowed down by the authoring process. Mars is an additional product on top of the Unity editor. It's available for a 45 day free trial or a $600 per year subscription. So I think there's no better way to demonstrate Mars than to simply use it. So now I'd like to walk you through the entire process of creating an image tracking app. And I really mean thoroughly end to end. So everything from how to obtain Unity Mars, to use it, 
So how to deploy it? Again, in my case, on an Android phone. So first of all, how do you obtain Unity Mars? Simply browse to unity.com forward slash products forward slash Unity hyphen Mars and click try for free. Click the Unity Mars free trial and continue to purchase. Then sign in with your Unity ID. You'll be prompted to enter some organization and payment details. I'm going to fade to black here so that my payment details aren't visible. <laughs> then you'll see this confirmation page. Now you just check your emails. The Unity Mars installer will be emailed to you. Just click the link to download it. And now I'm going to build the project. To do that, we open the Unity Hub. For this project, we're using Unity 2020.1. If you don't have this version, just click Add, find the version of Unity you'd like, and click Next. I'll be building my app for Android, so I'm also going to select Android Build Support. I'll agree with the conditions, and we're done. Now I'm going to start a new project. Click Project, New, and select the version of Unity we just installed. Name the project whatever you'd like, and hit Create. Now we see the familiar Unity editor. To import Mars, click Assets, Import Package, Custom Package, and select the installer that we received by email. Click Import. We now have new window options under Window, Mars. Select the Mars panel and dock it wherever you'd like. This panel contains presets that make it really easy to get started. We need two more windows. Under Window, Mars, select Device View. Again, dock it anywhere you'd like. This view shows us a simulated AR device, like a phone camera. It reflects what the user will see. Right-click on Device View and select Mars Simulation View. This view shows the entire simulated scene rather than the user's point of view. Now right-click the hierarchy window and select Mars, Mars Session. This makes some adjustments to the camera, so you're ready now to create augmented reality applications. At this point, if you click play in the device view, you can move around the scene using the W, A, S, D keys and holding down the right mouse button to look around. This simulated garden is just one of many environments that we've included for you. You can use this drop-down menu here to choose between several simulated environments. Choose the one that best reflects the real environment you will be using in the app. For this demo, I'm going to use the factory. We're creating an image tracking app, so we need to add the images that will act as markers. To create a folder, right-click in the asset window, <laughs> I overguessed myself there. And hit Create Folder. We're just going to call it Images. In your normal file explorer, find the images you'd like to use and just drag and drop them in. Now I'll create a new folder, which I'm going to call Marker Library. So again, right click, Create Folder, and name it. Within this folder, right click, and go to Create Mars Marker Library. I'll just hit Enter to keep the default name. With this image library selected in the Inspector window, click Add Image. Use this button to select the image, give it a name and a size. One in Unity is one real life meter. So these images are about 25 centimeters large. I'll do the same again for my second image. Now we need to hook up the Mars Marker Library to our session. To do that, select the Mars session in the hierarchy and use this round button to find your Mars Marker Library. Now we need some digital content to spawn on the image markers. You can find lots of content in the Unity Asset Store. You can access this by clicking Window, Asset Store. In 2020, this takes you to an online portal. 
or you can browse straight to the website, assetstore.unity.com. You can search the asset store using keywords, or you can search by category. You can also filter by price. Once you've found that the asset that you'd like to use, click this button, which should say download or buy, and then open in Unity. This will take you to the package manager where you can import your new asset. Of course, it's possible to import your own personal assets to visualize. Maybe you have a 3D model or CAD data or a diagram. Unity Mars also comes with some simple prefabricated objects that you're welcome to use. You can find them inside Assets, Mars, Content, Shared, Prefab. Now we'll start making our app. To create an image marker, we just click Image Marker in the Mars panel and then choose which image we'd like it to track. I'm going to stick with number one here. I'll click Image Marker again to create a second marker. And for this, I'll choose image two. Now I just drag the prefab objects I want to spawn onto the image marker I want to spawn on top of. We can't see these in the simulation view, but we can see them in the scene view. I'm going to zoom in for a closer look using the middle mouse button. Right now, the image markers are on top of each other, but that's not a problem. I will move them apart just to view them, though. These arrows look a little big, so I'm going to select the arrow, not the image marker, and change its scale to 0.3 or 30 centimeters. I'll do the same with the other one. Right now, both arrows point downwards relative to their image marker, but I want the first arrow to point left, so I'll rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis. I want this arrow to point right, so I'll rotate it minus 90 on Y. I also want the arrows to float slightly above the image marker, so I'll make their Y position 0 0.05, so they're floating five centimeters above the image. If we zoom in, we can check that this has worked. You may have noticed we can't see these arrows in our simulation and our device view. That's because they act like the real world. The arrows aren't spawning because the image markers don't exist in this environment. These icons here indicate that no matching image marker was found in the simulated environment. To add one, click Synthetic Image Marker in the Mars panel. I'm going to drag it by the arrow gizmo to adjust its position. and then select my desired image from the marker library. Now we can see the arrow spawning in our synthetic environment, just like the real world. And we can see the synthetic image in our environment hierarchy. If we scroll right to the bottom under simulated markers. We can also see that this icon has changed to show that the first marker has been detected but the second marker still does not exist in our environment. I'll click Synthetic Image Marker again to add the second marker, adjust its position, and choose my desired image from the library. These images are currently on the floor, but I'd like to see how they look on the wall. So I'm going to rotate them by minus 90 degrees in the z-axis and minus 90 degrees in the x-axis. I'll adjust its position so it's flush with the wall, and I'll do the same for the other image marker. Now, if we click play in the device view, and we walk the user around the position of the arrows, using the WASD keys and the right mouse button, we can see the arrows spawning as we'd expect. We can even see the arrows spawn five centimeters away from the image markers as we designed. Now we're ready to deploy our app to a device. I have an Android phone, so I'm going to configure my project to deploy to that specific device. To do this, I'm going to go 
into Window and find Package Manager. Ensure that this dropdown is looking for packages in the entire Unity registry. This shows all of the packages we could download. Use the search bar to find AR Foundation. Click Install or Update. If this button says Up to Date, you already have the latest version and you don't need to worry. Next, search for XR Plugin Management and do the same again. Finally, because we're using an Android phone, we must find and install the AR Core XR plugin. Our final step in Unity is to adjust the build settings. Click File, Build Settings, Android. If your Android device is plugged into your computer, it should appear in this drop down list. Select your device and hit Switch Platform. Now click Player Settings. There are lots of optional settings here, but I'll just show you the essentials. Under XR Plugin Management, ensure the Android tab is selected and that both Initialize XR on Startup and AR Core are checked. Now under Player, find the Graphics APIs. If you have Vulkan, remove it, but ensure you do have OpenGL ES3. Find the minimum API level and set it to API level 24. Uncheck multi-threaded rendering and ensure your scripting backend is set to IL2 CPP. Finally, under target architecture, uncheck ARM7 and select ARM64. We're now ready to send our app to our device, but to stop it from being blocked, we need to unlock developer options on our phone. On the Pixel 3a, these can be found in the Settings tab. Find About Phone, scroll to the bottom, and tap on Developer, sorry, tap on Build Number about seven times. This will unlock developer options on your phone. You can find these in Settings, System, Advanced, Developer Options. To allow your app, just switch on USB debugging. Now, back in Unity, we just have to click Build and Run. Name your app whatever you'd like and click Save. When your app finishes building, it will automatically launch on your device. And this is what the app looks like. When it finds those image markers in real life, it will spawn an arrow. If we look from the side, we can see it spawns the arrow about five centimeters from the plane, just like we saw in our simulated environment. The arrow on image marker one points left and the arrow on image marker two points right. And that's it. That's how to build an augmented reality app with no coding in about 13 minutes. Now, that was something of a whirlwind tour. I hope that was helpful for some of you. Don't worry if you couldn't quite follow along in real time. I did speed up the download process quite significantly, but you can always follow along with the recording. You can see that Mars allowed us to create AR content completely visually. We can even drag and drop content where we want it. If we didn't want to use an augmented reality image marker, and we just wanted to spawn our AR content on the floor or on a table, you can actually drag and drop your prefab object straight into the simulated environment. And that's it. Mars will figure out the rules of that interaction for you. So it really is very simple to use. Because that simulated environment view reflects real life extremely accurately, it means that we only had to deploy to our phone once we were actually finished with our app development. If we wanted to see how it looked and make lots of changes, historically, traditionally, with AR app development, we would have had to deploy to our device every time we want to test the application and make a change. That really is a very time consuming part of the process. So one of the most powerful things about Mars is really how it speeds up that development process so much. And it's one of the reasons I really love using it. 
It's also very easy to build on top of Mars. It's built like Lego bricks. So maybe instead of arrows, you want to spawn a user interface or CAD data or some model that is relevant to you or your business. That's very simple to do. You can also add functionality and extensibility, such as interaction. So you have, could have the content animate or change. You could have a model explode and expand when a user comes within a certain distance of it or presses a button. You could have instructions that scroll with a scroll bar. Really, the possibilities are endless. You're only limited by your imagination. It also has built-in systems for rules. So if you wanted grass to spawn all over the floor, or you wanted a, a certain model to spawn on any surface that was the right size, maybe any table that's between half a meter and two meters large, Mars has the ability to write those fuzzy rules for you. It has that logic built in, so you really don't have to code that. You can just tell it to do those things via a simple user interface. Now I'd like to show you how Unity's AR capabilities, including Mars, are being used already by industry leaders to really solve problems that would otherwise be impossible. In the automotive sector, Toyota uses Unity's AR solutions across their product lifecycle. So one challenge they faced was showing the functionality of internal mechanisms of the car after it's been assembled, especially when those mechanisms require the car to be in motion. Previously, it would have been difficult or maybe just impossible to show that kind of functionality. Now, using Unity and the HoloLens 2, users can move around and inspect a car that is virtually in motion. And in augmented reality, they can see the mechanisms working internally, making that uh, challenge now um, completely simple and straightforward to do, which previously would have really been impossible. Now, one way to localize that content to the car would be to use image markers. And as we've just seen, using image markers in Mars is really very simple. You could also use Mars to simulate the showroom or the factory floor and the car. That would allow you to easily iterate on changes, such as deciding when should the content spawn as the user moves around the car. AR can also be used for very highly effective sales and marketing. In 2017, IKEA used Unity to create the IKEA Place app. This is a product visualizer and configurator. So it really puts the product into the hands of the consumers. They use their phone to scan around their environment and it detects planes, so walls and floors, and it spawns content of an appropriate size inside their local environment. They can then configure, change aspects or colors of the product, and that leads to a higher conversion rate or a higher probability of purchasing. Using Unity Mars, you could easily replicate the success of this app. You could create content that is generated under a particular set of conditions. For example, the app could generate picture frames or clocks on walls, cushions on tables and chairs, and bigger furniture like sofas when it finds a large expanse of floor, depending on the size and the orientation of the planes that the app detects. AR can also bring huge benefits in terms of service and maintenance of a product, as well as training of staff. ABB is a supplier of industrial machinery and software, and their field operators have to service expensive and dangerous machinery, which means that they have to undergo, or previously had to undergo, uh, very time-consuming and costly training before going out on site. Once deployed to the field, it's difficult to track um, the allocation and the procedures of which have or have not been completed. So this tracking was done on paper and uh, had to be processed afterwards. That resulted in delays and also communication problems. To resolve this, ABB used Unity to develop a novel software solution, which allows any field operator to follow digital instructions in AR while they're servicing the machine. It allows any operator to become an expert without expensive, time-consuming training. It also means that the procedures can be tracked and the data is sent back in real time, so it reduces any delay or communication problems. Now, ABB's um, image tracking actually works, or their UI rather, is spawned based on image markers, just like in the demo we've created. 
So you could create an app like this using our earlier demo as your jumping off point. I hope these examples and your own experience with Mars has given you a taste of what's possible. If you'd like to build on your knowledge, we have a whole host of learning resources available. If you don't already have Mars, you can obtain it via this link, it's a product page. And I've also linked an ebook that I think is a great example of other industry use cases, uh, mostly XR use cases. So if you're interested in seeing more evidence and statistics, for example, on the return on investment of these technologies, I'd check out that ebook. If you'd like to learn more about Mars and its capabilities, then I would highly recommend these past webinars. And finally, I've linked our software development guide if you want to jump in and extend your demo. Finally, I want to thank you for coming to my talk today. I really hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions for me, hopefully I'll be able to take some live now. Um, but also, if I'm not able to answer your question live, that's no problem. You can follow up with me on Twitter if you have any questions or feedback about the talk. And if you have questions about the content in this demo, please do post it on the Unite Now Unity forums, where myself and my colleagues will endeavor to answer all your questions. Once again, thank you for attending this talk and have fun creating. Thank you very much. I'm going to take um, some of the questions. This is a very interesting question. Can markers be used to augment an entire room? In theory, yes. Um, what I would recommend is that markers instantiate or spawn content that's quite local to the marker because if the marker leaves the view of the camera then it will uh the camera will struggle to, to locate that content uh, what i would say is that mars is fantastic for adding content over an entire room because it has a built-in planes visualizer so you simply click one button in the mars panel you can visualize all the planes and then you can set up a rule to uh, generate content say grass uh, over the entire floor that it can see. And so you don't actually need to place image markers over your environment. It can just dynamically spawn that content as the user moves around. So that's that's how I would recommend doing it. However, you certainly could place several image markers around a room if you wanted to spawn uh, lots of different content in, in different parts of the room. Ah, there are some questions I don't know the answer to yet. Um, does Mars have a student license? I don't believe so but I will endeavor to find out for you. Um, that, but that is a very good question. Uh, it does have a 45 day free trial though, which is quite a long period. Um, and I would definitely recommend um, signing up for that if you're interested in experimenting with it and uh, seeing if, if it's worth the cost. And you can um, uh, set that to not auto renew if that's something that as a student um, you can't um, justify. <laughs> Oh, this is a very good question. Do all users of the app have to have their phones in developer mode? I don't believe so, no. Um, personally, I've actually only deployed mobile applications to my own phone. Um, so I'm not certain on this, but once you've actually um, developed an APK, which is Android's uh, format for an application, um, you can push it out to the Play Store where it has to undergo some checks and then your users can interact with it. So certainly for something like the IKEA Place app, it does not require your users to have their phones in developer mode. Um, it's just so that you can deploy straight from Unity uh, and build straight to your phone. It speeds up that process. Uh, another, con another content marker type question, can we generate content relative to the initial marker? I'm not quite sure what you mean by that, um, Rabimba. So please do um, give me some details there. But if you mean, oh, I think I understand. If you mean uh, there's an image marker, can you generate the content like to the left or to the right or above or, or below the marker? You probably wouldn't want to do below. Um, yes, you can. It's very, very simple. Uh, in the same way that I changed the position of the arrows and I moved them up slightly, you could just uh, generate content on the left of the marker. That's completely fine. Uh, what I would say is, again, if the image marker is out of view of the camera, um, then you might struggle to... Uh, to, to locate that content. So I wouldn't put the content like two meters away from the image marker because then you'll struggle to keep both the marker and the content in view. But that really depends on the context of your application and, uh, and the size of your application as well. So if you're creating something for a billboard, it probably you can generate content some distance away from a marker. The 
some really great questions here. Um, filmmaking in AR and VR. I really like this question. So um, if you don't already, I would follow Ben Radcliffe on Twitter. He's my colleague uh, and he's specifically uh, focused on media and entertainment. So he has great experience in the film industry. Um, I think augmented reality and virtual reality have a very interesting role to play in media and entertainment. Um, right now, they're being used to bring the characters to life in the local environment. So um, Mars was used by uh, Dr. Seuss and used um, to create Dr. Seuss IP by uh, a company called Sugar Creative. And that was actually um, an augmented reality reading book so you would open up the book it would show um the it had quite a young audience it would show the user the um the letter and then it would start uh, instantiating or spawning uh, dr seuss characters around the room and so for media and entertainment um ip is king uh, generating your content in the environment of the user is, is really interesting vr is quite a different use case um one of my um past roles. I used to work in a planetarium, so I have experience working in a 360 dome environment. And uh, VR film is, of course, a 360 spherical film. And really, when you're creating that type of content, you have to have different considerations than a flat film. For example, the user has six degrees of freedom. They can uh, move in three directions and they can look in three dimensions. Or if it's a a still experience where the user doesn't move, which is more common, they have at least three degrees of freedom. They can look in any direction. Um, that's quite different to traditional film where we do know the user's attention is focused on the screen. So you really have to think carefully about things like spatial sound and lighting and uh, how to draw a user's attention. So it's really interesting. I think there is fantastic potential in those spaces and there have been uh, award-winning you know, virtual reality films and content. Um, but yeah, it, you really have to approach it with a different mindset. And in that case, augmented reality and virtual reality have quite different use cases, I would say. Um, can Mars handle things like occlusion? That's a, a very good question. And can hardware like Intel RealSense cameras, iPhone 12 LiDAR be used to provide or boost that capability? Yes, it can. So Mars has two different ways of doing occlusion. It could be planes based. So that's based on the planes that it's detecting, or it can be depth based. So planes based occlusion would do something like um, if you generated content on the floor in your user's room, and then there was a table in the way, what occlusion means for anyone that's not familiar is like blocking or hiding. So um, augmented reality content is drawn on top of the camera feed. So by default, if, uh, for example, in the demo we made, if I waved my hand, the arrow would appear on top of my hand because I didn't add any kind of occlusion or hiding. Objects in front of the augmented reality uh, virtual object will still appear behind unless you add in that capability. So I would recommend uh, planes detection, which is very simple to do in Mars. It's, I think it's one or two clicks to implement it. Um, and that means that tables and uh, especially cubic objects or walls are very good at occluding um, the object that's behind them. Um, however, this doesn't work as well for something like uh, cars or people walking in front of the camera or any very dynamic, fast moving content. So for that, you can implement um, depth occlusion which means anything that's closer to the camera that's in front of the space of that virtual object will occlude it. Um, in terms of LiDAR, LiDAR works fantastically well with Mars. Um, I'm going to get an iPad Pro with LiDAR very soon, so I'm very excited to test this out. Um, but I've seen Mars being tested on LiDAR-capable devices, and what it really helps with is detecting the planes. So if you don't have LiDAR and you're scanning an environment which is a very pure white environment, so like a white hallway with absolutely no texture or color, it can be difficult for the camera to obtain the information necessary to start placing AR content. Uh, which is why image markers can be really useful in that context. But with LiDAR, that's no problem at all. You can scan a, a pure white environment with almost no visual markers. And of course, uh, LiDAR is like radar, basically. Um, it will detect the, the depths. So yes, LiDAR really helps um, not only with occlusion, but also with the planes detection, um, particularly when you don't have many visual markers. Ooh, yeah, loads of questions. 
Okay, so someone has said, I would love to create custom simulation environments from meshes from 3D scans, as I haven't been successful with planes extraction. That is something that I am currently investigating and I'm exploring on uh, at the moment. So I know it is possible to scan your environment and then to create that as your simulated environment. Um, right now, I can't tell you how to do that. Um, I'm currently uh, working on learning that so I can teach you. But yes, that is something that uh, we have the capability to do. So that simulated factory or um, room or backyard that you saw in the simulated environment view um, could instead be your actual custom environment. And so you could test content in a location specific application Maybe you want it to work um, in a specific, at a monument outside and it's not practical to keep going there to test it. Or right now, because of the pandemic, we're all working from home. So perhaps you want to test it in, a, uh, in the office space, but you don't have access to that. That's something that, that you can do. You can bring in your own custom environments and then uh, test in those, which is really a powerful application. Um, so there's actually two questions about that. I will, now I know what to create my next tutorial on. Um, it's really good to know, actually, if you have any feedback about um, things you'd like to try and do, um, what you'd like to use Mars for, what features you'd like to see or learn how to use, please do let me know because I'm very interested in tailoring my content to uh, really solve your problems because I work across a number of industries. Uh, every industry has different pain points and needs different solutions. So I'm very interested in hearing your specific use case and uh, helping you to uh, deploy the, the solution that works for you. Oh, can we use real objects as markers like a chair? That is doable, but slightly more difficult. I'll see if I can create a, a tutorial on it. Um, one of the reasons that's challenging is an image marker really only has uh, a few dimensions from which you can view it so you could see that when we moved off to the side um you know the image tracking started sliding very slightly so with an image marker you'll always get the best tracking if you view it face on however you can change the angle and um it, the tracking should should continue obviously with a 3d object there are so many different views of that object that you have to have a much more intelligent tracking um so potentially yes it's going to be more challenging. What I would say is something like um, a can. So you've got a cylindrical object with an image on is going to be much more straightforward because it's still really image tracking wrapped around a tube um, versus something like a chair, which really you can view from any angle and it doesn't necessarily have any specific visual markers on it. Um, that would be that would be more challenging. Just reading some of the questions. There's some very good ones. Um, that's a good question that I don't know the answer to. Can AI be used in the same way as visual markers? Could you, for example, detect a specific car and occlude it by another car? Um, that's very similar to the question about using a 3D image as a marker. Um, I don't know of an example where a specific car was detected and occluded by another car. Um, I'll endeavor to find out for you. I'll make a note of it. Um, I, I can't think of a use case where that's happened. One of the challenges there is that um, machine vision, machine learning uh, often looks for unique feature points. And so cars have a very similar structure to each other. And so it might be quite difficult for um, machine vision or AI to recognize one car uh, as opposed to another. Um, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. So I'll try and find out. Oh, I like this question. This is quite different, but I'll take this question. Um, what would your tips be for someone who, in this case, is a, is a graduate student or someone who isn't strong in coding, who wants to focus on if they want to get into the AR and VR industry? Um, this is a great question because I don't have a computer science background myself. Um, I actually come from a, a zoology, animal behavior background, and I actually taught myself Unity uh, before ending up working at Unity. And I had the specific interest of learning AR and VR. 
Um, what I would say is that Unity is a great tool to use because you don't need to have that coding experience initially. It is useful later, particularly when you want to develop um, really custom logic and, and really sophisticated things. When I started learning, Mars didn't exist. So really, I had to code any sophisticated logic. I would say now, using Mars, you can get away with using the rules and the conditions, which we didn't look at in this demo, but I'd like to show in a future demo. Uh, you can set up rules and conditions just visually using the user interface. You actually don't need to code. So you could become a, a VR and AR, uh, you could create VR and AR applications and, and be a developer to some degree without actually knowing any code. Um, so I would, I think that's the real strength of Unity is that you can get that feedback and get that application working nearly immediately. And then if you do decide to jump into the coding, that unlocks a lot more options for you as well. Um, yeah, so I would say experiment, uh, try things out. Don't be afraid of doing things wrong. And um, also just to just to see what's possible, just to use it in different parts. I've been the person who sort of championed AR and VR in every industry I've been in until ending up at Unity. Um, so if you can be that champion within your business and show that it, it's really applicable and relevant, um, that really goes a long way. Because once you start using it as part of your day job, like you learn super quickly. <laughs> uh, this is a good question. Is the Oculus Quest AR capable using pass through? Really, if I was creating an augmented reality application, I would recommend either a dedicated AR device or a phone. Um, because using VR pass through, you can get some really interesting results. Um, but you might run into some unexpected roadblocks and it wasn't really designed with that in mind. So the Quest is fantastic for virtual reality applications, which we did touch on in the talk. So you could use um, VR to train staff, for example. And in fact, the Quest is widely used for training in a, a number of different industries um, from energy to aerospace. Um, so VR applications are really widespread as well, but I don't think uh, a headset like the Quest is really extremely suitable to, to AR um, capabilities. I would recommend something um, more like a HoloLens, or if you um, don't have the resources to obtain something like a HoloLens, there's actually, um, I just uh, found out about, there are these, these head-mounted, I don't know if I'm allowed to like plug products, but there are head-mounted devices, a bit like Google Cardboard, but more sophisticated, um, where you can mount your phone and you can create these AR applications either using your hands or using dedicated controllers. And they're very, very low cost, like under, under $50, kind of 40 pounds cost. So it is really becoming increasingly possible to get a dedicated AR headset if that's what you'd like to develop for. Ah, okay. This is an interesting question. What are the limitations for marker tracking if the marker is in motion? Someone, someone knows what I'm uh, talking about. Yes. So if you look in the chat, um, some of the attendees are talking about the, the device. I, I actually don't know whether I'm allowed to mention which device it is, but it's on Kickstarter. Uh, and I think it's great. I'm really all about democratizing knowledge and bringing augmented reality to, to everyone because lack of access to devices was really one of my uh, biggest obstacles for a very long time. So yeah, if you can get your hands on low cost AR devices, like I'd recommend doing so. Um, sorry, back to my question. Uh, what are the limitations for marker tracking? If the marker's in motion, tracking speed, can you track a marker on a race car? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think you can, I've never tried. Um, but no, I don't think you'd be able to track a marker um, with that much speed. However, if I was tracking something that moved that quickly, I would use a more internet of things approach. So I would use um, a tracking device that sends out its its location, and then you could stream that data into Unity. Um, one, of, one of the powers of Unity is that it's a real-time engine. So you can create things that are reacting to the real world. You're not sort of pre-rendering your content. Um, so you could have a race car moving at a certain speed. You could have a device on it that was measuring its speed or its location, its direction, you know, 
coordinates, whatever you would suit. Um, and then you could use that data to, you could visualize that data in whatever way you wanted. I don't think image markers would be best suited um, for that example. I would use a, a more dedicated device that is uh, measuring the, the position or the speed, depending on what your application is. Um, okay, there's another question here. It says, can you apply markers on the floor? Oh, I've just realized I'm still sharing my screen. I don't have to do that. I can see the Q&A much easier now. That's much better. Um, are there any plans to ID moving objects and spawn onto and track like with a dog? That's a really interesting question. And I really want to know what the application is here. Um, so Mars, I didn't actually show you this, but Mars comes with these templates. Um, so for example, if you want to create a tabletop application where the spawn things on a table, uh, if you wanted to, so say you wanted to visualize a product on a table, like a bag or something, um, it also has a miniatures template. So that allows you to spawn miniature content. So say you wanted a entire building or factory um, to spawn on a table in miniature, it has a template for that. And also it has a face tracking template. That's really useful for any kind of um, face tracking application. So things like filters um, or even try before you buy jewelry applications. Um, I've been creating one of those as a kind of test. And that's um, tracking moving content. Um, however, tracking a moving object like a dog would be extremely difficult to do visually. Part of the reason for that is dogs are extremely varied. In fact, in computer vision, um, the dog cat problem is often used as a common example of a very difficult machine learning problem to overcome training a computer on whether something is a cat or a dog, because there's so much variation within those two populations. So I would say that um, in terms of plans to ID dogs specifically, I don't know of any. However, um, Unity does have a whole department for machine learning and AI, and we have something called um, Unity Perception. I think it's called that. Don't go me on that. Um, and one of the things that they've been working on is the ability to identify, um, for example, content in a grocery store. So you could look at a shelf and it could identify all of the different um, products. And that could really help with things like price comparison, or it could really help someone who is visually impaired, for example, to conduct their, their shopping and know which product they're looking at. Because obviously, um, in a tactile sense, you can't tell one cereal box from another. Um, so there are some really amazing capabilities with Unity um, Perception, with Unity's machine learning, um, which is a little bit separate to, to what I work on. But I don't know of any specifically that are tracking dogs um, but I will let you know if I find any. Um, in the case of a dog, again, I would use a, if it's, if you're trying to track the position of the dog, I would maybe use a marker or something like that. Um, like a, like, like with the race car example. Um, I guess it really depends on what you're trying to achieve in your specific application. Um, let's just see, I've got more questions. Someone's put their hand up, but I don't know. Ah, Unity Perception. Thank you, Jerome. Jerome is my colleague who's saving me from uh, calling it the wrong thing. Yes, I was talking about Unity Perception and there's a link in the chat for the user who asked about um, computer vision and for anyone who's interested in more about what's possible with computer vision. It's not just image tracking markers that you can detect, it's all kinds of uh, complex data. So. It's really interesting to see what's possible. And I'm blown away every day by what people are creating with Unity. I'm really excited to see more adoption in industry um, and see what people create, because I think we're, we're really on the, the kind of turning point of that now where it's, it's really starting to explode. And it's exciting to see some of the, some of the crazy content that people come up with. Um, loads more questions. If I don't get to your question, um, I will try and answer it afterwards. So either in the Unity forums or um, via my Twitter. Um, if you have any uh, further questions about this talk or about my, um, my career journey into VR and AR um, or any feedback on this talk, then do reach out to me on Twitter because I really appreciate feedback and I love engaging with um, people who are working in this space. Um, great. 
I think that's it for now. I don't think I'm going to be able to take any more questions there. Um, I really hope that this has given you a jumping off point. Um, as I said, that this talk will be recorded and will be made freely available. So if you do want to follow along with that demo, but you didn't, you weren't able to uh, obtain the software in time because, of course, I did speed up the download bars, then um, absolutely do find it and follow along. Create your demo and share it with me on Twitter. I really want to see uh, what you've created. Of course, instead of the image that I've used, you can use your own image. You could use um, a painting or poster in your house. You could use your company logo. I would say use something that has a lot of details um, because if it's um, very simple or symmetrical, it may not work as well. So use a, a more complex image like a poster may work quite well. Um, yeah, and share with me the content that you're creating, any questions or comments or feedback that you have at all. Um, and I guess that's it. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. I, I really appreciate it. And I'll answer uh, all of the questions that I haven't managed to get to either on the forums or via my Twitter. Um, thanks again. And have a great day. Have fun creating. <laughs>